Hello and welcome to a Z Classroom video on merge similar polygroups and merging similar subtools. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to manage your models better with a few new features found in ZBrush 4 R2. Now, from time to time, you may have already have existing models that you want to bring into ZBrush for further refinement and rendering. Here's an example of a model being imported for the purpose of rendering with ZBrush 4 R2. You can see from these two renders in ZBrush 402, we needed to be able to assign materials quickly to specific parts. This was completed by assigning polygroups to similar pieces of the car. Let's take a look and see how this was done. Now you can see when you import any model into ZBrush, it's going to have one polygroup assigned to it. What I'd like to be able to do is select certain parts of my car and have assignment capability to just that particular piece. So in order to do this, we're going to open up our polygroup sub palette and click our auto groups button. This button will allow us to assign polygroups based on a topology shell. So for example, each tire will receive its own polygroup, each rim will receive its own polygroup, each piece of the car will receive its own polygroup, and so forth. You can see once this is completed that each tire has received its own polygroup along with, as you can see, the rims have received their own polygroup, even our front fenders here have received their own polygroup. So now by holding down the control and shift key, I can select just by clicking on that particular polygroup. So you can see here, I can select out just that front tire, or I can select out just that rim. To bring everything back, I need to hold down the control shift key and click in the any open space in our document. So even our fenders can now be selected individually by holding down the control shift key again and clicking on that fender. Now the problem we run into here is I want to be able to select both sides of the car. So the new merge similar groups button when this is pressed, we'll be looking at the vertex count of the entire car, finding pieces that have the exact same vertex count and assigning a polygroup based on that. So the tires will receive their own polygroup, the rims receive their own polygroup, and as you can see here now, the front fenders have received their own polygroup. So now when I hold down the control shift key and click on the fender, I get both sides of the car. Same thing with our tires. If I am now to click on my tire, I get all four tires, even with my rims and other parts found on the car. Now you may notice that this particular model, when we import, is only one subtool. Many cases we're going to be using several subtools in ZBrush. So let's go ahead and split up this car based on polygroups. To do this, we're going to click on the group split button. You'll first get a warning telling you that this is an undoable action. So I'm just going to say OK because I'd like to be able to split my car up into several subtools based on the polygroups. Now because we've used the group similar button and our tires were all one polygroup, that means we have one subtool that are all our tires. Same thing if I'm holding down the Alt key and clicking on my rims, I select my rims and as you can see, they are one subtool. Now you may notice that our tires were the very first subtool and our rims are way further down the list. Now in the new ZBrush 4 R2, I can manage my subtools very quickly by holding down my Shift key and clicking the up arrow. What this will do is move the selected subtool, in this case the rims, to the top subtool, which is right above my tires. So now I can completely manage all my parts from my wheels very easily. Again, I can hold down the Alt key and select my disc brakes, which you see are further down the list of my subtools. By holding the Shift key and clicking the arrow, I now move them to the top, which are right above the rims and the wheels. I can also even hold down the Shift key and click the down arrow, which will move the rims all the way to the bottom of our list. Now this is one way to manage our subtools. Another way to manage our subtools is clicking our Auto Reorder button. So when I click this, ZBrush is going to reorder the subtools based on polygon count. So you can see for this particular car, the tires are the highest polygon count. Now when I click the Auto Reorder button again, ZBrush is going to do the opposite and give us our lowest subtool polygon count and then work its way up to the highest as it goes down the list. Again, we can click this one more time to do the opposite and give us the highest polygon count item, which is our tires, and keep working its way down to the lowest polygon count order. You can see in this example that I've split the four tires off to be their own individual subtools, as you see here. Now I want to be able to merge these subtools again to be one complete subtool with all four tires in it. Now we have in ZBrush 402, with one click of the button, we can merge similar. And when we click this button, ZBrush is going to give us a warning letting us know this is an undoable action, but when I hit OK, ZBrush is going to look through all subtools and find the subtools that have the same vertex count and merge them as one subtool as it just has done with my tires. Now all four of my tires that were individual subtools are now one complete subtool. And you can see that my polygroup are maintained because each tire 
now had its own polygroup. Now to convert it to one polygroup, all I have to do is go to my polygroup subpalette and click on group visible. And now my tires, again, are one subtool with one polygroup. And that's using merge similar polygroups and merge similar subtools. Thank you for watching this video and continue to watch more Z Classroom videos on pixelogic.com.